Welcome to another episode of the Cobra Daytona build. In this episode, I'm going to uh, assemble the ball joints into these things, get the ball joints set up so these arms are ready to go into the chassis. As you can see, they've been painted. I actually painted these a while ago. Uh, I think I showed spraying those, but I'm not even sure if I remember or not. Uh, these here are the bolts that go into the lower control arms, which are all done, ready to go on the chassis, and then I'm pretty much out of parts. I'm waiting on shocks and everything else. So. Come on along, we'll show you how the ball joints go in and um, move forward. So these are the, I guess, Mevo Tech ball joints. A lot of guys go with aftermarket ball joints. I did not do that on my previous build. Um, I actually had no issues with the ball joints that were supplied from Factory 5. Uh, some people do and they don't go in very well, um, but I had no problems. So I'm gonna try them again. Uh, good, bad, and different, I don't know. But as I said, I had no problems having these things thread up in there. So we're gonna uh, give them another shot, try them again. If I have problems, they don't wanna go in all the way, then what we'll do is uh, we'll get the other ones. I think the other ones are how racing, if I'm not mistaken. So let's, uh, I think the easiest way to do this is we pull the boot off. See, so this is gonna come down into here because it's gonna go outward. See, I have no, I mean, that, that thing just screws in easy. Look at that, I, I had no issues there at all. So I don't know, maybe I just get lucky. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe I don't. Um, but as I said, so I'll put some red Loctite on there and then we're gonna screw those things down in. But I want to make sure, as I said, they should go out, which they do. So we don't want to do it that way. So yeah, we'll clean up the inside of those threads, get some uh, red Loctite in there, and then we'll torque these things down. And uh, this is what I do like about this white base coat clear coat is the clear really is easy to keep clean. You wipe it down just like a car. You just wipe it down and it's good. The white will not show scratches. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to clean up all these threads and all this because Loctite's not going to stick to that. I won't show. I'm going to wipe it down with some acetone. As you can see we're getting some grease in there. And that's not going to be conducive for a solid seal. So we'll get some red Loctite in there and screw this thing in and lock it down. So we got some red Loctite. I'm going to put some red Loctite into here. We'll screw this thing in. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chuck this up in the vise up here so I can really kind of get a solid turn on it. I think it's gonna be easier than trying to put it, a pipe wrench on. Uh, gotta figure out where the hell, I think we'll go this way. Uh, and I think we go this way. I'm trying not to mar the, the white paint, so I'm trying to leave it up just a hair. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then we'll crank on it that way. Okay. Hopefully we didn't mar the paint. Uh, a little bit. A couple right there. Oh well. I said it's a suspension piece. We got some grease there, but that wipes off easy. Okay. One is installed. And I've actually got the energy suspension boots because people say these boots suck. Um, so we'll, I got those inside. We'll grab those. Might as well throw this in there too. Okay, so I'm switching out these boots. People say they don't like very well with some of these uh, energy suspension. Number is 5.13102R for red. Don't know why I went red, but just the way it is. And I'm not sure which one to go with here. Uh, 
I think that would probably be about right. And then I think if I need a shorter one, I don't think that one would work on there anyhow. Nope, so it's got to be that one. And there we go. So then once that gets bolted up, that'll be tight. So in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll keep the nut on here and my cotter key, cotter pin. That way when these things are ready to install, um, they're ready to go. So, and then these things are gonna bolt up into here. Oh, maybe they go up on top. Yeah, I think actually I think they do go like that up on top. Um, well, actually, since now I'll be doing the street height, they're going to go on the bottom. So that's going to look really nice. So, yeah, that looks good. Okay, didn't show you there, um, but yeah, it's all done. So we'll just kind of wipe some of the grease we got off there and some of the red Loctite that kind of oozed out. Oh yeah, those fit really nice. I got man, that's another one of uh, Paul's. Uh, he he comes up with just these great products to use that it's definitely worth the upgrade. I mean, they're you know, a few dollars. I don't know what the total price was, but they're not bad. Okay, so lower control arm gets sandwiched into there. Um, my paint's kind of made it really tight. So, and what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna use a screwdriver, kind of get these holes to be just where they need to be. I'm both these things are ready to go. I lost my cotter pin gear, my cotter pin. So looking at the manual, here it says to put it between the two plates, the upper control arm. Then you hit here base and R model upper alarm location. So I'm, I mean, that's actually going to hurt your camber gain as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to keep it where it's at. Um, and I think that's probably if you use the upper hole for the lower control arm for the R model, but we're going to be using the lower hole because I don't want the car that low. I don't want to be uh, hitting everything. So we're going to leave it where it's at. And uh, we can always make do at another time if we decide to move it. So yeah, you can see here. So it says base and R model upper arm location. So that kind of, yeah, it looks like we got torqued the bolt that holds the arm to the frame to 80 to 85 feet pounds. We'll do that next. Okay. So now we're going to uh, torque these things. I got my impact here. I'll set it on medium. That gets me about 80 feet pounds. Then I'll pull the torque wrench out. wrench up in here. Okay, so I wired the uh, upper control arm out of the way. It just, just was easier. So that's 85 feet pounds right there. There we go. So then I'll put a little witness mark on that. Let's go to the other side.